10 Minutes with Tamara, and I'm here today with Carissa B. And yes. she's my special guest. Welcome, Carissa. Thank you. Thanks and for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited for all of these little videos we're doing. Today's episode is sponsored by Cleanables, and I love their products. I've known them for years. This woman invented a product that I wanted to invent. She makes these keys that are stainless steel toy keys for babies, and they're baby safe. Babies always want to play with your keys, and real keys are really high lead, like 10,000 parts per million, 15,000 parts per million, and they're not safe for babies to play with. My kids are too old for that now, but if I had a baby, I would for sure get those. So I'm here with my guest and really good friend, Carissa B. She's, she's announcing her new name. So here's oh my to announce her new name. Yes, I know. My name used to be Carissa Bonham. My name was Carissa Bonham for a really long time. We are by Carissa B. Now I um, blog at creativegreenliving.com. I have known Tamara for, how long have I known you? I think five years. Five or six years. So well, we knew each other on the internet for a while. Yeah. Like maybe a couple years before we met in real life. The first time we met in real life, we slept together in the same bed. <laughs> and and she was pumping milk. No. You were pumping. I was, not while we were sleeping. No, I mean. but you had to, we had to, you brought your pump with you. Yeah, because I was, I had a baby, a nursing baby, Am but I, I had gone down to a conference. Did, so. you, did you bring your pump with you? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah I did. Because I was a nursing mother who was out of town at a conference, and so um, I had brought my pump to pump for my baby while I was gone. That dates it. Uh, that say, so that figures that that dates when we met in person. The, yes, it does. So that's why, and that baby is now six. So um, I think it must have been five years ago. I am looking at the possibility of moving sometime in the next year, right? Like I, I currently own my house. It's a new construction house. When somebody is looking at buying a house, what are the things that they need to look for to make sure that they're minimizing lead and toxic exposure to their families? That's really interesting because I'm in the middle of writing that post and I was going to publish it like later today. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I've got it like, and I was so tired. I was like, Len, can you finish writing this for me? Because you know exactly everything we want to say but I've been dealing with my roof and everything. So um, yeah, I'm writing that post. And the interesting thing is I'm writing that post because real estate is crazy booming right now. It's a seller's market. People everywhere are buying houses and everyone is asking questions. And what I recommend first is start with a post 1978 house if you can. Um, don't even bother looking at pre-1978. The risk just isn't worth it. The, there are, you know, fewer houses in the 1950s and 60s that have the high lead paint hazards, but that's not exactly 100% the case. There are many houses that I've been to where I found lead paint hazards that were very significant, and the house was built in 1975 or 1979 even. So I do, um, out of an abundance of caution and based on the housing that I have been in and seen all over the country and the world, actually, I recommend houses that were built after 1989 and in that window, like 1989 to you know 2000. And you still always, always have the concerns for tile and plumbing. So plumbing was leaded and still is leaded. The interesting thing was in, I believe it's 2016, 17, the new law uh, was phased in that required plumbing throughout the United States, plumbing fitting, fittings and fixtures to pass water that only leaches a certain amount of lead, which was the California standard for water prior to that. However, up until 2016, you can have gotten all new faucets for your home and had very high lead faucets unless you bought them in California. Always get the water tested at each of the faucets where you might put the water in your mouth. A lot of counties and cities will actually uh, test your water for free, but you want it to come in at one part per billion or less. So the other concern is tile, and tile is never usually, with some exceptions, but never usually a concern in itself if it's high lead. Like it only presents a concern if it creates dust in the demolition, like if you use a sledgehammer to break up some counters. So that's like the, the most significant concern. So then people also have said, you know, oh, I can't find a new construction house in my area. Well, I'm going to be including that in this blog post, what to do if you can't find a new construction house. So stay tuned and go to the blog yes. post. <laughs> Luckily, the area I'm moving to has plenty of houses that have been built since the 80s. So, um, but I do know that depending on where you live, you know, I went to graduate school in the Boston area trying to find a home that was 
built since the 80s was very hard to do. It's a lot of historic homes. We bought our house in 2007 and we knew it was a lead painted house. The siding had been recovered with new cedar siding. And I was really confident that it would be safe for our kids, even though it was an old house because it had been redone. Well, I was wrong and I was stupid and my baby was repoisoned. My baby was poisoned. The baby that we had in that house was poisoned after we had the other kids. Um, yeah. So I really, really, really strongly advise against any older homes. It's not worth it. I mean, I thought I knew what I was doing. We spent 40000 renovating our home before we moved in. After the kids were poisoned at our old house and wanting to make sure everything was good, we replaced all the windows. We had hazard assessments. We thought it was safe. And then Charlie tested positive. And I just wanted to, you know, you know, I couldn't believe after all we've been through. Yeah, you know, what I think you said, you said something really important too, because you had already gone through the hell of having your older children poisoned and you bought a house and knowing everything you knew, you did everything that you thought in your power that you could do to protect Charlie. And even, even then, you being the expert that you were, still ended up having a child who had been exposed to lead because lead is so small and so sneaky that it can get into any place. And I think a lot of moms have a lot of guilt uh, after their kids have been poisoned um, that they should have known better and should have done something. But even you as an expert, it, it's happening to so many people. So I think your advice that just skipping all of that instead of trying to do this thing where we're like, well, how, how do we, surely it's safe because of X, Y, and Z. It just takes like one thing to have not have been done right at some point in the history of the house to potentially poison somebody. I wanted to ask you a question. Oh. Out of all my blog posts, I yeah. have maybe 30 most popular blog posts. One of them was written about something toxic I found at your house. Which one was it? Oh, it's the peanut butter jar? <laughs> yeah. Tamara was house sitting for me and was looking through my pantry. It was organic peanut butter too. Like it wasn't even like, you know, the kind that they're spraying with glyphosate. It was organic peanut butter that I bought at Costco and my children need a ton of peanut butter. And so like in my mind, it's like, well, it's in a plastic jar, which like I don't love. Normally I would buy glass jar peanut butter, but because it was organic and we eat so such few food items that are packaged in plastic anyway, that I was like, oh, it's fine. And then what made you, I guess this is my question for you then, what made you decide to test my peanut butter jar with the XRF? <laughs> well, <laughs> Um, so my husband has a friend who is a really close friend of ours. I think he's about 70 now. His name is Lee Hitchcock. My husband edited his book before we met. The name of the book is Long Life Now. It's about, you know, um, living a non-toxic lifestyle because prior to writing that book, he had a young wife who had breast cancer and died. Um, oh. and he wanted to solve the puzzle of how do we live past the cancer that is taking over our community in our world. Anyway, so in his book, Long Life Now, he wrote that one of the most toxic foods ever invented and fed to families and children and people is peanut butter and plastic jars. Oh. So the oils in the peanut butter combined with the hydrogenated oils and the heat method of packaging peanut butter in plastic jars makes the oil bond to the plasticizers in the jar. So you're eating more plastic than mm -hmm. with pretty much any other food product. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you did that. Like I stopped buying peanut butter at Costco. <laughs> well, thank you for being here with 10 Minutes with Tamara. I really appreciate that you took the time. This episode was sponsored by Cleanimals and their product is a safe for children and a great alternative to letting your kid play with keys if they like to play with keys. One, one thing I wanted to let my friends, fans, followers, and readers know is that I'm going to be doing some additional episodes of 10 Minutes with Tamara where my guest comes on and they show me their tchotchkes and, and I tell them whether or not they have lead or, you know, oh. what the best guess is. It's a good idea, right? That's a great idea. Yeah. See you next time. This is 10 Minutes with Tamara. Tamara Rubin, Lead Safe Mama, leadsafemama.com. Thanks for being here.